Hello, uh, welcome back to another update as I cover the list of movements throughout the front line in the Russo-Ukrainian war from a neutral and unbiased perspective. Welcome with the newest updates as soon as they happen with evidence. So we start out in the Fdivka direction where we have seen the Ukrainians launch counterattacks with infantry-based assaults in the forest lines in the outskirts of the front line of the Russian positions that they have recently established. So we're seeing that there's continuous fighting throughout the FDFK front where we've seen Russian advances towards the city itself and by the railways. And now we're seeing some Ukrainian counterattacks in this direction where we have some geolocated footage here to the north, to the southeast of Novo Kalinova. As we see here in this geolocated footage, the Russian forces showed Ukrainian positions in this forest line. This is footage from yesterday, the 9th of January. Therefore, we now see that the Ukrainians have reestablished positions in the forest lines to the south of Nova Kalinova. And with that, we see that the Ukrainians have launched some sort of counterattack here at the northern flank of Krasnovarivka. And as such, they are now controlling these parts of the forest lines. This shows that the Russians are likely stretched thinly here in this section of the front line. And it makes sense because there's very limited supply that can get to this northern flank through Krasnovarevka, especially if it needs to be sent into multiple directions. And the Ukrainians have now taken advantage of that with their counterattacks here in the northern flank, which is the weakest of the Russian positions here in the area. They have the heights here avoided by the waste heap to the south of Krasnodivka and without taking control over Stepova, they are now in a dangerous situation and in the northern flank they are expanding and securing their parts and possessions here by the railways. However, the Ukrainians are also counterattacking in this section as this Dacha area here to the east of Novakhmutivka is likely some sort of fortification for their side which allows them to then pressure the Russians who are stretched thinly and far away from their nearest village that they have under their control. So the Russians here are outstretching their positions and they definitely need a stronger force and better supply lines if they want to continue advancing in this section. Otherwise, we'll see continuous counterattacks by the Ukrainians in this section of the front, which will allow them to regain positions that the Russians used a lot of men and equipment to take. The same here to the southwest of Shevardne, where we have this geolocated footage here, which shows Ukrainian positions being hit by artillery here in the forest lines to the southwest of Shevardne. And with this, we see that further gains by the Russians have been negated by Ukrainian counterattacks in this section of the front line. So if this continues and the Russians continue outstretching their forces in these open fields, which makes them very difficult to resupply, we'll see continuous advances by the Ukrainians in their counterattacks, which are likely to succeed with their close proximity to their own villages. This strategy by the Ukrainians to pull back strategically to their own villages, allowing for shorter supply lines, has the advantage that the Ukrainian soldiers fighting in these areas have a much easier time to stay fully supplied and continue the fight. The disadvantage is that they are more concentrated in these smaller areas, which allow for the Russian artillery to do more damage when they hit their targets. As such, it is a double-edged sword. They'll be able to fight for longer as long as the Russian bombardment isn't too heavy. And the advantage there is that the Russian positions here to the north of this river line are very far and few in between, with Vodiano, Opitne and the northern parts of Pervomaiske being the only areas. As long as the Ukrainians keep hitting their supply stations and supply depots, then the Russians will have a hard time shelling the Ukrainian positions. And therefore, this strategy will be very effective against the Russian forces. As for the southeast of Avdivka and the industrial zone, we see this geolocated footage showing the Ukrainians shell being shelled by the Russian forces. So we see that there's continuous presence by Ukrainian forces here in the southern outskirts of the first line and that they are pressuring the Russian forces in the industrial zone. However, we're seeing that they are making no progress towards the Russian positions. And this could explain why there's been no advances by the Russians here in the southeast of Avdivka in the residential area, as there's been too much focus on defense. Since the Russians have been unable to advance, then it is likely because they're focusing on preventing the Ukrainians from cutting off their supply lines here in the north. So we're seeing continuous pressure by the Ukrainians towards Russian positions here in this section, and they're hit by artillery as they attempt to do so. 
We then move on to a southern direction towards Marinka and Hryhorivka, as we here are seeing continuous advances and attempts of advances by the Russians in this direction. First, we have geolocated footage of Russian shelling of Ukrainian positions right here by the front line in the north of Hevorivka. We also have geolocated footage of Russian shelling on Ukrainian positions in the central parts of Hevorivka by the intersection between the northern and central parts of Hevorivka. And then we finally have some geolocated footage of Russian forces being shelled by Ukrainian positions here in the south eastern part of the central part of Rorivka. So with this we're seeing that the advances the Russians have made here have been confirmed by geolocated footage. We also see that they continue shelling both at the front line and at the back line of Ukrainian positions here in Rorivka as they attempt to advance further westwards. We then move further south in the direction of Novokalinova, Novomirailivka, where we see that the Russians have managed to advance slightly here to the west of Solotke, here expanding their zone of control to the south of Novomirailivka. They will likely look to advance further in a northern direction towards the southwest of Novomirailivka, as they failed in their attempts at storming Novomirailivka and getting a foothold. They're now trying to expand their zone of control to the south of the city and advance here in the western direction, which will allow them to gain further control over these open fields. But again, this allows the Ukrainians to continue with the strategy of staying close to their own villages, which will allow them to have more and better, easier supply lines, which allows them to heavily shell Russian positions, advancing here in the open fields, which allows them to be exposed, while the Russians are going further and further away from their own positions, which will make it more difficult for them to get resupplied so unless they are actually going to storm ukrainian positions then this slow advance through open fields is not a good idea as we saw throughout the ukrainian offensive here in the separation front we then move on to the krinky direction where we have this video here which shows russian forces storming ukrainian positions here in the krinky direction where a tank was destroyed in this process by Ukrainian artillery in the section of the front line. So although the Ukrainians going through the river line do not have enough supplies to properly hold and expand their bridgehead and they're under constant attacks by the Russians, they do have proper artillery support from across the Dnieper River and with the Ukrainian soldiers across, geolocating and finding the Russian troops directing the artillery fire, they're able to inflict some damage on the Russians trying to get rid of this bridgehead across the river line. So we're seeing a st status quo here in the clinky direction as Russians aren't dedicating enough forces to completely push out the Ukrainians and the Ukrainian artillery support is enough to deal with the current Russian dedication to pushing the Ukrainians out. But at the same time, the Ukrainians do not have enough supplies to expand their bridgehead and are instead slowly but surely being pushed back by the Russians from both sides. Moving back a bit north in the direction of Verbove, we reported at the end of last year about the Russians regaining control over the trenches here to the west of Verbove. And we have this recently located geolocated footage, which shows Russian positions here in the western parts of the trenches as they're being shelled by Ukrainian forces. So we're seeing although the Russians managed to recapture the trenches, they're still fighting ongoing by them as the Ukrainians are shelling the Russian positions and the Russians are trying to regain full control over them and clear the area. Moving on further north, we have both in the direction of Bakhmut to the southeast of Bohdanivka, some Ukrainian positions being heavily bombarded by Russian artillery here by the roads, which shows Ukrainian presence here by the forest lines as the Russians are attempting to do some frontline shelling to advance further in this direction. As for the northern parts by Kremina, we also here see some geolocated footage which shows Ukrainian positions pushing back the Russians in recently gained territories, allowing them to push the Russians back and expand the area to the east of Terni and preventing further Russian advances in this direction. We've seen some Russian advances here in the northern parts 
and the Ukrainians took advantage of that to launch their own counterattack in the central parts to negate some of the Russian gains in this area. And with that, we are now seeing that the Ukrainians have regained some positions, gained, regained full control over the forest patch and line here to the east of Terni and pushed the Russian forces back with their recent advances according to the geolocated footage. So we're seeing that the Ukrainians are regaining some of the initiative after the Russians have used the whole month of December to push the Ukrainians back. And here at the start of January, the Russians still had the initiative, but now we're seeing some counterattacks by the Ukrainians. Time will tell if this is going to be a new trend where the Ukrainians will continue to pressure the Russians all throughout the front line, or if this is just the part where they say the flame burns the brightest before it's it goes out so we'll have to see if this is a large ditch attempt by the ukrainians to gain some advances or if the russians will just completely demolish them at any point in time we're going to see in the future but that's going to be it for this update thank you for watching and have a great day